Chelsea take on Arsenal this weekend in the Premier League. The Gunners going through a bit of a sticky patch at the moment. They've lost two of their last three Premier League games. And they'll be hoping that that doesn't happen again this weekend at Stamford Bridge. We'll start with Arsenal, Kwaku. Um, up front, they just look a little bit toothless at the moment. They look like they're lacking that final punch that you need um, to land that knockout blow and essentially take points from teams. I've just seen a very similar thing in Milan, um, away at Inter. Difficult game, obviously, in a very atmospheric place. I thought the performance generally was pretty good from Arsenal. But again, as I say, that final punch was was missing. Are you starting to worry for Arsenal's title chances? I know you're a Chelsea man, but in the sense of, are you starting to look at them now and think, maybe they're not as good as I thought they were at the start of the season? Yeah, if I'm being objective, yes. Um, and that's not to dig at Arsenal, but that's just looking at how they're playing right now. Um, two seasons ago, I think Arsenal playing the most exciting football in the country. But when it came to those big games, weren't getting the results. Last year was the most complete Arsenal side I've seen under Mikel Teta. The football was decent. It was still exciting, but a little bit more pragmatic. And away at those big sides, you were getting the results. Your record against the top six last season was impeccable. This year, the football's just not there. It's not exciting football. It's pretty pragmatic. And now you're not getting the results either. And so with Arsenal, I feel like there's... Um, maybe I'm fairly so... There's always pressure when Arsenal play because I feel like they're in a rare position this season of being that side alongside Man City that were challenging for the league title. But Man City, because they've won four in a row, when they drop points in the game or lose the game here, they, no one's really making too much noise. Every single Arsenal game is followed by so much noise and so much chatter. Liverpool don't have that either because before the season, nobody had them down as title contenders. Arsenal having to contend with so much noise that comes externally and then also internally. There are a lot of Arsenal fans that haven't actually seen you guys win the league and it's it's the first time they've been here. So they don't necessarily know how to react to certain situations and then how to react to, to a poor run of results. And then you've got it for the first time in a long time at Arsenal off the pitch of the Edu stuff, there's murmurings of discontent as well. So it's not a great time for Arsenal. But one thing you cannot deny is that Arteta's built an incredible football team. And they're a resilient football team as well. And I expect them to turn this around. I don't expect Arsenal to be in the top four battle. I do expect them to challenge for the league title. But over the last three games of the league, you lost against Bournemouth, you drew against Liverpool, and you lost against Newcastle. If you don't win the Stamford Bridge, that's four games without winning the league. And I don't know if you can afford to do that with the form that Liverpool are in. And also, bear in mind, Man City have not played that well, and they're still only lost one game this season. Completely agree with, with pretty much all of that. I, I've got to say, that was a very fair appraisal of where Arsenal are at right now. I think in terms of the title thing, I said it on last week's show, Arsenal are out of the title race until they put a run together that shows me that they're back in it. The onus is on them now to go and drag themselves back into the race because as we speak today on the 8th of November, coming up to 5pm, they're out of it. That's the truth of the matter. They're too far behind. We've seen what the standards are. We've seen how high the bar has been set. I do believe that this year the title will be won by a side on fewer points than we've seen in Agreed. recent years but not so few a points that you can afford not to win in four games. Arsenal have to win at Stamford Bridge. It is a desperate situation in terms of their title hopes at this moment in time. I think that's fair to say. Odegaard hoping to be back fit and available, which will be a massive boost to Arsenal. I don't want to sit here and just say it's about injuries, but it'd be wrong of me to dismiss the part that those injuries have had in Arsenal's performances dropping off and then the results as a consequence of that. Chelsea, though, Really, really strong start to the season. All the talk in the summer, Kwaku, was about the chaos at the club. You know, the number of players. How was Enzo Maresca going to find his way, find his team, bring some harmony to the group, embed his style of play? He's done all of that mm. in the opening weeks of the season. And I think Chelsea look great. And I make them favourites on Sunday. I, I know we heard the odds earlier on in the show, and they're not. That surprised me. It surprised me too. Before I go on to Chelsea and, of course, talk about our strengths and why I think we are very dangerous in this game against Arsenal, with Arsenal, what really frightened me last season when we played against you at the Emirates was that midfield trio of Odegaard, of Rice, of Partey. I think that's your best midfield. In the absence of Odegaard, we've seen an Arsenal side that have struggled to go forward in terms of creativity. But what disappoints me with Mikel Arteta, a manager that I think is one of the best in the Premier League, 
is that sometimes you take a risk. I think that away game at Inter Milan, the game you were at, perfect for Ethan Wanieri. Okay. And, I, and I've seen it in the past, whether it's a young Jack Wilshere or a young Cesc Fabregas, go and put on clinics away in Europe. And I feel like in the, in the Champions League game that doesn't have, I wouldn't say that much gravitas, but in terms of losing that game, it doesn't have too much consequence. And Ethan Wanieri, to go and start in that game and really, not ruffle feathers, but get people going, the youngster that doesn't play that fear, would, nest, would put you in a good place in case this happens against Odegaard. Because there's no guarantee that Odegaard doesn't go down again. And Arsenal can't afford for this to happen. I look at Wanieri play, every time he comes on, every time he starts in the League Cup, he's good enough. And if you're good enough, you're old enough. Let's not forget, Rick Arteta gave this guy's debut when he was 15 years old. And so for me, what I've seen is a cautious approach from Rick Arteta, which is as a result of the pressure that's on because you're challenging for the title. And that stands us in good sense in terms of Chelsea, because if Arsenal do come to Stamford Bridge and are cautious, we can approach it on the front foot and really put you under the cosh because going forward, we're electric. We've got players that can hurt you. Nicholas Jackson has improved massively this season. We all know how good Cole Palmer is. There's been questions about how he turns up or he doesn't turn up in big games, but I expect him to have a very good game on Sunday. And our midfield duo, Lavia and Caicedo, are very, very strong and protect a, a fairly weak back four. And so I think that if Arsenal approach this game cautiously, like Arteta has been in the last two or three months, let's be honest, then I think Chelsea have got a real good chance of getting three points at Stamford Bridge against Arsenal, which is something that we haven't done for, I think, six years now. Where I do hold Mikel, Mikel Arteta accountable recently is that I think he's prioritised physical power over technical ability and the balance has gone too far the wrong way. And so without Martin Odegaard, I completely agree with you, you needed an Ethan Wanieri. Mm. Now, had Emil Smith-Rowe been at the club, maybe it would have been him that he turned to. Maybe it would have been Fabio Vieira. But Ethan Wanieri deserves to play because the truth is no one else is doing it and the balance in the midfield looks completely off. What I will say is, had it been Arsene Wenger in charge, Wanieri would have absolutely got those minutes because he was fearless in that sense as a manager. If you were good enough, you were old enough and you were in. Mm. And it didn't matter. And we saw so many examples of that over the years. A young Nicholas Anelka coming into the country. Cesc Fabregas got his debut at 16. We saw it so often from Arsene Wenger. Mikel Arteta just seems to be a bit more reserved in that sense. And it's, I think it's been to the detriment of Arsenal at the start of this season. I'm not saying Wanieri was going to fill Odegaard's boots to the max and be uh, you know, a carbon copy of him. But the midfield has looked so off in terms of its balance. That's why I'm really worried about the game at Chelsea because Rice is a doubt. Odegaard, how fit can he be having been out for a couple of months? And then you look at Partey, who's been excellent recently, but how much can he carry by himself? I think there's some real issues in that Arsenal side at the moment. But from a Chelsea perspective, mm. I know you've mentioned the attack specifically, but where do you really fancy yourselves to go and impose yourselves on the game? Um, like I say, that midfield duo of Lavia and Caicedo have really established themselves. Um, there's been a lot of conversation about Enzo Fernandez. Does he fit in? Does he not? He won't start. It will be Lavia and Caicedo. Um, and that gives us protection of the back four. But again, Big moments call for big players. And I have been remiss, and I, w I will not do it until I see it consistently. People ask me, do you think Cole Palmer is the best player in the country? I think he's one of them. I think he's incredibly talented, but he's not a Mo Salah. Every time you tune into Liverpool 4.30 on a Sunday, even if Mo Salah's not playing well, he'll give you a goal, he'll give you an assist. The game against Arsenal, for example, gave you that goal. Yep. Game against Chelsea, fairly innocuous for the whole game, gave you a goal, gave you an assist. The mark of a great player is doing it consistently when the opposition know what you're going to do. We've seen it this season against Man City, against Liverpool, against Manchester United. The opposition know what Cole Palmer's going to do and he's not been able to do it. Um, and this is not me saying he doesn't turn up in big games, by the way. Last year he scored against Arsenal. Last year he scored against Man City. Last year he scored against Manchester United. He scored in the final of the Euros. He's a, he's a man that has shown up in big occasions. But this is the first season where we're recognising him as one of the best players in yeah. the country. Go and show it. These games were won by those kind of players. But Kaya Saka, I've seen him do it for Arsenal so many times. The goal against Liverpool, for example, just beats Andy Robson, bang, top bins. And he doesn't get the credit because he's been doing it for so long. I want to see Cole Palmer give us one of those performances against one of the big names in the Premier League. And if he does, we've got a great chance of beating you because our recent record against Arsenal is poor. And it, it really, it baffles me because... When I was growing up, our, our record against Arsenal was great. Our record against Manchester United was great. But recently, we've struggled against you lot. So this is the best chance or best opportunity in a long, long time. But this is, again, Sod's law. This is going to be the first time in maybe 
a month, a month and a half, that Arsenal are going to be able to line up with their strongest eleven, And I think we'll see that from the start. Fingers crossed. Fingers <laughs> crossed from my perspective. A quick fire prediction. I'm going to go Chelsea 1, Arsenal 2. I fancy us to turn our season back around. I saw enough out in Milan to suggest that Arsenal's performance level has increased again. Still lacking something in the final third, but hopefully it clicks at the weekend. Really quickly before I give my yeah. um, prediction, when you're out of Milan, what's the feeling amongst match-going fans about the way that Arsenal are playing right now? What's the feeling towards Mikel Arteta? There was a frustration at the end of the game um, at San Siro the other night, but I think there was also an acknowledgement of the fact that that performance was a lot better than what we've seen in recent weeks. So even though the end result wasn't there, I think everybody came away not angry that we lost the game, but disappointed because they felt the performance warranted more. I think the match going travelling support are right behind Mikel Arteta still, as they should be. Yes. I think sometimes it's easy to get sucked into the noise online and think that that is the opinion of the majority. But um, yeah, I think people are still with him at the minute. Quick fire prediction. Um, I'm going for a one all draw. I'd love to sit here and say that Chelsea are going to beat Arsenal, but I just can't see it. This is an Arsenal team that still are one of the best teams in the country, in Europe. And I think Chelsea are going to struggle to beat them. But a 1-1 draw would be a decent result for us.